What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Daily Dose with Dylan Davis. This week, we're streaming to you guys live on the Pain Alliance Network through their Twitter and YouTube account. And we are also streaming to you guys live through DSM Media's Twitch account. So if you're new to either channel, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that follow button. And today I'm joined by my man, George Ryder, here at the Pain Alliance and at DSM Media. George, look, man. I'm going to get your thoughts on the Sixers and Game 7 and the offseason a little bit later in the show. But we're going to switch gears and start with the Phillies, who have not made life as a Philadelphia sports fan any easier over the course of the last week. So, A, how have you been? B, how are you feeling as a Philadelphia sports fan right now? Uh, I've been all right. A little sad. It hasn't been too fun watching Philadelphia sports recently. I uh, was hoping the Phillies might bring a little joy back after that Sixers loss, but... It's been nothing but pain, so not great, not great. You know what, like, I was just thinking about? Remember when we went a couple months without sports? Yeah, that was— And remember way. how badly we wanted sports back and our Philly sports teams back? We're so dumb. But remember how stress-free—not stress-free life was because we were in the middle of a global pandemic, but just stress-free, my, my mental health was a lot better without these teams in my life— and the the play on the court, on the field, on the ice, has not made it any easier uh, lately. And they don't make it any easier off the field or off the court or off the ice recently as well. So let's start here, George. Reese Hoskins, my man, my man. Okay, let me think how I can phrase this to you. <laughs> the Philadelphia Eagles were in the basement for me as far as the four teams in this city because of how badly they had pissed me off over the over this last calendar year, right? And I never in a million freaking years thought that this Phillies team, who I quite frankly did not have very high expectations for, could reach the level of of pissed off I am right now by the words that come out of them that they spew. It would be one thing. If the Phillies were competitive, if the Phillies were not that they're not competitive, they're only a couple games under 500. They're five games out of the first place in the division. But it, you know, you can make comments like, I'm sure you're going to write about that, but uh, don't forget about the right the good stuff. Write about the good stuff too. Reese Hoskins is batting 224 right now. He just cost the Phillies another game with his piss poor play in the field at first bla- at first base. And since, you know, a little before his comments, this, you know, this uh slump started. But George, uh he's O for his last 21 plate appearances. Yeah, and uh So pa- you- pardon me <laughs> if the Philly media or if me aren't writing about the good stuff. Pardon me if me and George don't get on here and don't rip you a new ass. Okay? Because apparently that doesn't happen in the locker room, and that's problem number one, and that's what a large portion of the show is going to be about because the Sixers spend an offseason talking about accountability, right? This Phillies, this Phillies team, this roster, this locker room, from the manager to the players in it, have no accountability, and it's unfreaking believable to me that he made those comments after the piss-poor play that this team is putting out on the field right now. He has to regret that, right? Because, like, he comes out yesterday, too, and he goes, oh, does he? Three strikeouts. I mean, dude, it's a tough situation. I mean, why make that comment when this team is doing so piss poor in the field, pitching-wise, managerial-wise, everything? Don't forget to write about the good stuff. What good stuff? What good stuff do we have to come out right now? There's nothing good. What the, the one home run he hits every 11 games? Like, is that the good stuff, Reese? Yeah, that one power swing that we see that makes everyone go, whoa, and then back to nothing. It's been piss poor performance by the Phillies. And splitting with the Mets, like, that's that's a loss. The Mets are so happy to split with us right now. Yeah. They're so happy. They're like, great. That's awesome. Yeah, let me keep my five-game lead here right now. The Grom's worst start of the year. You still lost. There you go. My issue with it, dude, is it's not like he was playing good at the time. It's not. It's the fact. It's just the fact that it seems like no one is held accountable. Odubel Herrera. I don't know if you watched the game last night because I I've been trying not to watch the Phillies, but I can't pull myself away from it now that there's now that there's no more Sixers right now. 
Um, and I'm watching the first inning, and Odubel leads off with a double. And then, cut. you know, he gets over on an out, and then Kutch walks, and they have first and third, one out. And he's not paying attention. He's talking to, I believe it's what, Suarez at third base for the Reds. He's talking yep. to him, not listening to the third base coach, you know, not having a big lead. And then Bryce hits a little chopper to Joey Votto, and he just, like, dogs it home. Oh, he got a- thrown out by eight years, dude. That's just did not Odubel, smart, Did Odubel Herrera get pulled from yesterday's game? Oh, fuck no. No. No, there's yes, no it accountability. Dude. Yes, it and, would Gabe have pulled him? Gabe would have pulled him. Yeah, he might have. Yeah, probably. Yeah, he might have. And look, and listen, and we're going to get into Joe Girardi in a little bit, but it's not to say that Gabe Kapler would have this Phillies team playing at another level because this Phillies team, the, a large portion of their struggles is just that they're not that good. It's not everything that that Girardi does is the sole reason they're losing, but it's a it's a large portion of it right now. At, whereas, you know, Gabe Kapler has the San Francisco Giants who have – a mediocre roster <laughs> at the best uh, record in the MLB right now. But back to the Hoskins comments <clears throat> before we move on, it's, it's, I'm trying to put the words together because it's so mind numbing. It's like the athlete, dude, they're so laid back right now. It's like, they don't have a desire to win right now to be better. And it's like their performance is just okay. Don't forget to write about the good stuff too. What a what just- good stuff, Reese. What? It's just this a bullpen has problem. blown more leads, has blown more saves this last week than there are days in the week. They have blown like seven games in the last six days or something like that. Seven blown saves in the last six games. Dude. That's ridiculous. It is June 29th. They are a few blown saves away from a franchise record. Yep. It's June the franchise record covers the whole season, George. Yep. It's June. There's three months of baseball left to be played. To put it more into perspective, 21 blown saves. It's the most by any team in a 76-game span since the stats started in 1969. George, That's- th- this would be like... Listen, I'm trying to equate. This would be like Carson Wentz last year coming out with all those turnovers and the losses piling up on the Eagles and him coming out. Don't forget to write about that touchdown pass. It's like Ben Simmons coming out and saying to the media, you know, don't forget to write about my defense and the good stuff. No, 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 no. You're losing. There is no good stuff. There, There are no moral victories. There are no personal player achievements, no pats on the back when you're losing. When this division is as bad as it has been this year, you're still only five games out of the of first place, and it's only June. But I have no faith that they're going to come back because of comments like this, because of just the laid back. I can't even stand Reese Hoskins anymore, dude. Talk about like one of like the nicest guys like you just see Reese, you hear him speak. He's probably so nice off the field. He's probably a great guy. I can't even stand to look at him anymore after those comments. What are you supposed to write about? Team is the team is three and seven in the last ten. You Negative. are twenty four yeah. points above the Mendoza line. Dude. You're O for your last twenty one. You struck out three times last night and went O for five in a loss. But we're su- they're supposed to write about the good stuff. Yeah. Three and seven. I <laughs> let it all out. Three and seven are last ten. Negative twenty run differential. We're only three and a half back from last place. Don't even say we're five away from first because we're three and a half back from the Marlins going to last. <laughs> like, there's no good stuff to write about, Reese. And that was just such a laid back comment from a guy that is underperforming, like majorly. And he's just he's just gonna say it to the media after that. Dude, and now here's another point to the comment ridiculous it's not even like there was a fire like lit under him from the comment like it's not even like he was pissed off at his and the team's play and then he was getting annoyed by the media you know and he kind of snapped back at the media which i wouldn't have mind to see like a little fire under this team or reese hoskins because they're frustrated with his play and how they're playing he sat here dude he just sat there like yeah i mean i'm sure you guys will write about this and that but don't forget to write about the good stuff too yeah what what are you what are, talking about? There's nothing good in this organization currently. Zero. Nothing. No, there's you. Yes, there's not one right now, dude. Not one. Zach Wheeler, 
Aaron Olsen. <laughs> okay, yeah, there you go. There, there you go. There Aaron you go. Olsen strikeouts the other night. Yeah, congrats. Guess what happened in that game too, George? They lost. They lost. So there you go, Reese. I'm sure there were writers out there writing about Aaron Nola's MLB record that he tied for 10 straight batters put down for um, striking out in a row, ten, striking out 10 straight batters in a row. I'm sure that good thing was written about. Oh, yep. but they lost that game, right, George? So who cares if they're writing about the good stuff? If you oh, look, my God. Do you, like, dude, do, do, does he know what city he plays in? Apparently not. Not to mention, does he know that a team in the city who had the highest expectations of the four major teams right now just got bounced in the second round and in a game seven at home and he made those comments how many days after that loss i'm not saying he should be th- worried about sixers fans and the six but know the read the room dude read the room of this fan base fan. this fan base is pissed off the sixers just got bounced to a lesser talented team in the second round when they were the number one seed you're you're the only hope right now because there's no other sports in this city going on. The union are going on, but that's that's not. I I'm talking about the the four right now. Four major, yeah. And you're shitting the bed, but they're supposed to write about the good stuff. Oh my god, I'm sorry. And di- yeah, dives. I, you know, I think some of this frustration is stemming from the 76ers. I don't think this is this is yes, this is Philly's frustration. But it's also piled up with Sixers frustration, um, probably a little bit of Eagles frustration because they they start back up in a month and I'm uh you ready ready I'm e- no I'm eerie <laughs> I'm yeah. eerie I I want to be ready I'm sure I will be but they bothered me more than any team ever has last season that I that I'm just uh, I'm, yeah. I'm 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 a little eerie for that so yeah the comments pissed me off I mean. Um, it should piss everyone off. That was it. Did. It was stupid. It was a stupid, lazy comment. It definitely did. But but let's move on here. Let's let's move on to something else that's been pissing me off, George. Let's do it. What we got? Nice, nice. Okay, this is a little shout out to my man Mike Small, um, who has said on to me and a lot of people mult- on multiple occasions that he believes that Joe Girardi is the best manager that the Phillies have ever had. Mike, we're going to need to do an emergency pod, bud, because I need to I need to hear your defense of it right now. And listen, I know what it's going to be. I know it's going to be, you know, well, what other options does he have? He put in Natalie Feliz last night. Well, what other option did he really have that he can trust? He put in David Hale. What other option? Any listen, it's not that the alternative is a good option. It's better than what he's doing right now. George, who who was who was available last night out of the bullpen? Now uh, none of these names you're gonna yeah. list are good names. But what, they're what are better. The names? Connor Brogdon and okay. Hector Neris were both available last night to pitch. And this was the seventh That's inning, right? Girardi's mouth post game. Okay. And he yeah. put it he put out who? Uh Natalie Feliz. He hasn't oh, pitched. Who has years. Him pitched? In Boy. over fifteen hundred days, I believe. Yep. Oh, yeah. I think the Eagles won the Super Bowl it's like since then, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. So he decided while all this heat and while all this focus is on the Phillies right now, it's in a Spencer Wolf. in a Spencer Howard two and one third, two and two thirds innings pitch yeah. last night in a game that he only he didn't get through the third. You have a four two lead on the road. In the seventh inning, because I couldn't even tell you who j- who came in and pitched for Bailey. Uh, who? Falter. Oh, okay. Bailey. Am yeah. I supposed to know that name, George? Newcomer, baby. <laughs> Am I supposed to know that name? I'm sorry. You're Was not I supposed to? to you're okay. Not I-, I just wanted to check in there. Nope. Um, he comes in and surprises the hell out of me, and he keeps the Phillies at a 4-2 lead. Yep. And you said it before the show. Why'd he pull him? Yeah, I mean, he could have let it ride about. I mean, the kid had pitched a bunch of innings, thrown a bunch of pitches to, at this point. His pitch count was getting up there. He had one out and a runner on first. Natali Feliz was the answer. You know what happened after that, George? <laughs> a whole lot of... Base runner, part. base runner, grand slam. No. Oh. Yeah. Guess what? Your two, your two, Your two-run lead just turned into a two-run deficit. Like that. You know what I think the worst part is about that? Post game, Joe Girardi says, We like him in that spot. We like Feliz in that spot. 
That's what he said out of his mouth. That, that is the problem, dude. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about accountability. Okay, it starts with him. He is the he is the manager. He is the leader of this locker room. He is the championship caliber manager, right? That we thought we were bringing in here. Yep. You have to own up. You either have to. I'm not saying throw your players under the bus because we don't like that either. But you have to hold them accountable. You have to say, you know what? We didn't have the piece. I don't really, you know, have the, this piece. Or he wasn't this guy. A couple of these guys weren't available tonight. Blah, blah, blah. You don't come out after that disaster and say that you liked him in that spot. You like the dude that hasn't pitched in over 1,500 days in that spot. That's you what you think, like. You would think, right, as a manager, a guy that hasn't pitched in four years, you're probably going to put him in a bullshit situational inning, not you know, a hot you, you would think that, George. You right? would. Like that's, that's what a logical manager should do. Right. You're not going to put him in, in a high leverage situation when you're on a streaky losing streak and you kind of have to win. Like right. You have to start winning now. We're five games back. It's time to start winning. Putting right. him in that situation was just boneheaded. Like it was, just, it was stupid. Everyone knew what was coming. That was the most predictable inning anyone could ever see. It really was. Dude, listen. Again, I get this roster isn't great. I get the bullpen sucks again. So he doesn't have a lot of arms to go to. I get that the back end of this rotation is so beat to shit. That Vince Velasquez has found himself in a starting role again. I get that they're injured because they have been. Bryce Harper has missed over 20 games of 70-some this season. D.D. Gregorius, Gene Segura, J.T. Real Muto, uh, relievers, Archie Bradley. Like, they are hurt. I get it. He has still cost them multiple games this year because of his decision-making. We just talked about the one last night, and that's just one example because it's so fresh in my mind. Me and George, before the show, were talking about the Mets. Was it the Mets game with Zach Eflin? When he lets him bunt in the bottom half of the inning, or were we on the road? Top half of the seventh. Top half of the inning, sorry. Yeah. And then you yank him in the seventh. What are you letting him bunt? What are you letting him step in the batter's box for if you're yanking him the next half inning? That is a mistake. How about you remember George when he um used two mound visits in one inning? Forgot yeah, that he already used a mound visit? He didn't know. He just forgot. He's forgot. Uh, yeah. Or like when you put in David Hale against the Nationals. Oh that, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Because he doesn't trust uh, his guys, I guess. Yeah. Um hmm, what else am I missing here? Oh, what about the other day I'm watching? It was against the Mets. Um, I think it was the one oh five game or whatever. I forget. And the Phillies had some, uh, some were making some noise with the bats early in the game. Might have been the first inning, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Jankowski's in the five hole. Yep. Jankowski's in the five hole, George. <laughs> I get it. It sucks that Jankowski even has to be put in the lineup. So that that comes back to you know giving him a little bit of an excuse. If Jankowski has to be in the lineup, guess where my man's going, George? At the bottom of the lineup. Where he belongs? <laughs> exactly. Not in the middle of the goddamn order. It's just, it's decisions like this over and over and over again. From from bullpen to to pulling guys, to, to leaving guys out there for too long, to his lineup, to just everything, dude. It's sad because this team sucks. Like, this team isn't good. We're not a winning team. We're a, we're, we're a losing team. It's okay. Like, it's fine. But Girardi has added negative value to this team. He hasn't improved us. He doesn't make us any better. He makes us worse, which is the saddest part. We get Girardi. It was like I was a Gabe Kapler supporter. Like, I feel like we I wasn't. Yeah, you weren't, but that's fine. When we got Joe Girardi, it was, a, I, it was over. Every It was the most easy decision in the entire world, the organization's easiest decision. Getting Joe Girardi in for Gabe Kapler, everyone's happy. You have a you have a manager, a championship caliber manager. You have a guy that has experience. You got your guy. He sucks. He sucks. He's a terrible manager. Like, dude, it's there's sad. no light at the end of the tunnel for no, me right there, now. There isn't. We, we have a – and I think the worst part is the reason why you have Feliz in your roster now 
our organizational depth is terrible. It's awful. They it's awful. Can't find a prospect. I've never seen anything like it, George. How many guys do they draft per year? Cornelius Randolph. Oh my god. Hold on. Hold on. How many players do they draft per year? A lot of players. A lot, George. A lot of because yeah. MLB draft. MLB Be- draft. Because they have how many? Uh, they have single A, double A, triple A, and then they're you got lower they're, time. You got lower too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. They do. Sorry. Oh, so they draft forty to fifty players a year. They can't find a prospect anywhere. They can't pull one out of their ass. And it's it, it's mind boggling, dude. And it sucks because Spencer Howard, man, Spencer Howard was no. the guy. Done. Done. Dunzo. Not a finished. That Can't kid, it's like you no, know, it's like a running joke. Like, wow, like Kent Spencer Howard's on the bump tonight. Can Spencer Howard get through the third inning? No! He Probably literally not. he literally cannot. And he sad the part is, George, he cruised through the first two innings. He yep. looked great through the first two innings. And then something somewhere along the line in the third, that was it. That was it. I Oh my god. It's mind blowing. It's it's All sick. Right. Moving on. Um I guess we'll go here. The bullpen, I can't even I can't even really touch on the bullpen for much long for a long time because it's just so it's so sickening to me, George. It's every off season they make some moves, just like this year, when they completely revamped the bullpen basically. They brought in Jose Alvarado. Archie Bradley, yep. Kinsler, you know, Coonrod, Brogdon was coming back up. He had some guys. And had in the beginning guys. of the season, it looked great. Very good. Very good. George, it might be worse than last year. They are worse than last year. Which George, is insane. Which they is insane. might be worse than an historically bad bullpen in 2020. Historically, do you know what that means? That means one of the worst ever. This year's Phillies bullpen might top that one. Yep. They might do it. <laughs> See, it's a, And, like, it sucks because we... Getting some some guys, some names, Alvarado, getting, getting Archie Bradley, getting some guys in there, Getting Brogdon in there that you knew he was going to take a step. That's what you thought. Everything was looking all right. Like, it was going to be an average bullpen is my thought. We're going to be an average bullpen. We're not going to be great. We're going to be okay. No. We are terrible. What did we say all offseason to each other and on our different shows, George? If they could just be middle – if they could just be middle of the pack. It's easy to build a bullpen. It is so easy to get guys in there. It's so easy to build a bullpen. They can't do it. They can't do it. Sorry, a I'm bullpen should be up. easy. I'm looking something up. Look it up. What we got? All right. So he hasn't been great, but I remember he was. So I was just looking up. Do you remember uh, they didn't keep Tony Watson? Oh, yeah. So at oh, one yeah. point this year, he was ter- he was tearing it up. Tony Watson yeah. in 2021, he's 3-3 three and three with a 5-2-5 in 28 games, 24 innings pitched, 16 strikeouts. He's got a 1.1 whip. Listen. I haven't looked up the numbers of the Phillies bullpen. I'll bet you that's astronomically better than 95%. That's better than Archie. I know. That's better than Archie. <laughs> it's All sad. right. And then the last part of this Phillies half of the show is here. George, we are just over, uh, just under a month away um, from the uh, MLB trade deadline. And I've, I just want to pose this to everyone. Should the Phillies be buyers or sellers? And who? So I was talking to George before the show, and, I, and I've said it a couple times on the show today, that they're only five games back from first place. They've been so bad, but they're four games under 500. they They're five out of first place. Maybe they make a little bit of a run. Maybe by July 30th or 31st or whenever that trade deadline is, George, what if they're a game and a half or two games out of first place for the division, right? And they're playing better baseball. What do you do? But you, I can't fool myself. For a slight second, I was like, "Well, if they can get there, you know, maybe, maybe you don't buy, you don't be sellers." 
No, you said it already. This team is not good. They should be better. This lineup should be very, very, very good. Mm-hmm. You have a one. You have a one, two, three of Zach Wheeler, Aaron Nola, and Zach Eflin, which is pretty damn good in my opinion. Yeah. So if you could just find a few pieces in the bullpen, maybe a, a fourth starter, maybe you, you would have something. I don't buy it, dude. I'm selling, selling, selling at the deadline, and I'm looking forward to 2022. Yeah, um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy into this team. Like, if we're a game and a half back, like you said, going to the deadline, it doesn't matter. We're not good. Like, we could get hot. That's fine. This division's very close. Like, we're very shaky division, but we're not a good team. So, I if we're a game and a half back, like, I don't, I don't know what you're gonna do. Do you stay pat? Like, you could, they could go right. any direction. And it's like, if you want to be, if you want to be buyers, you can. You can dangle Rafael Marcon, our catching prospect. Like he's probably the best trade piece you have. Who else do you have? You want to trade Gene, maybe, but he's raking. You want to trade, you know, Double, but like center field's so weak right now. There's, so, they're just. Uh, it's just, it's such a bad situation, dude. We don't have any assets. We have no assets to give. Exactly. So yeah. let me pose this to you and to everyone. Go ahead. <clears throat> You threw out a couple names to me about who you could sell because there's no more. You you, you said it. We have no prospects. We have no assets to sell, right? No, you're, not younger, giving, you're, you're not giving a price and start. You're not giving a price and start. Right, right. You're, you're like, not doing that, yeah. right? You laid out Reese Hoskins. Dude's got no value. Zero. Gene Segura doesn't have much value, yeah. okay? There's this whole Bryce Harper thing going around on Twitter right now, and I think it's the most asinine thing I've ever seen Stupid about trading Bryce Harper in year three of 13 with now like, yeah, when he got the 330, everyone's like, holy shit, 330. What's his AAV? 24, like 20, 25. 25, 25. That's great right now for Bryce amazing. Harper. That's amazing. amazing. Yes, he's been injured. He's underperforming a little bit this year. I know all of his home runs are without any runners on base. He hasn't gotten many hits with runners in scoring position this year or whatever the stat is that I saw earlier. Hmm. I get it. Bryce Harper has been worth every single penny for the first two years of this of his Phillies tenure. And he's struggling this year as the whole team is, and he's been battling injury after injury. Okay, so stop it. I get the whole, you know, well, he might want to leave because, you know, they're not putting together a winning roster. You can't, blah, blah, blah. You can't leave. He put You're in no trade in. clause. You're locked in, buddy. He said he doesn't want to go anywhere. He wanted to find a home. Build. Build for him. So that that whole that is nonsense to me. Yeah. Here's the name I'll throw at you guys. Aaron Nola. Woo. George? <laughs> um, I think Aaron Nola has a ton of value. I think you can get a pretty good haul for Aaron Nola. The only reason the biggest reason I wouldn't trade him is I love his contract. His extension was like but so are other teams. I know that's a thing. Makes five, years, a five years, five years, forty five mil. I think he's a year into that. I think it's the second year. I forget. Yeah. So, dude, it's a very valuable piece. Like, if you actually are looking to get a haul and get some prospects and trade a top name, Aaron Nola's your guy. Am I trading Aaron Nola? No, I can't trade Aaron Nola. I can't. Do no, it. why not? Let me ask you why not. Well, I mean, all right, this rotation's. I like this rotation's top three. I like Nola Wheeler and I like Eflin. I think Wheeler's your ace, and I think you really have like a number number two borderline ace guy in Nola. Yeah, he's had shaky starts this year, but shaky. you know what he is. Yeah. Shaky. Okay. No, Listen, you're right. No, you're very. You are right. <laughs> I want to. I do like Aaron Nola. I know, and I yeah. want to yeah. love Aaron Nola. I know. He is not an ace. I he's think not super solid number two guy. I think he's a good number two, maybe, dude. His mediocre performances outweigh the wow. Don't get me wrong. When that dude is on, he's on early and often all around the plate. His off-speed stuff is excellent, and he he strikes out 10 in a row. We've seen when he's on. 
Yeah. The mediocre performances outweigh those by a freaking mile. You said it. His contract is great, which could be great for the Phillies, but it's also going to be eye raising, eyebrow raising to teams that are looking to get a top starter out there at the deadline. And like I said, he's underperformed. But George, he hasn't just underperformed this year. What was the story this offseason? Can, can Aaron Nola bounce back? Why was that a story, George? Because he underperformed the year before that. So we're going on two years now of a guy who was supposed to be an ace after being in the top three for Cy Young, um, for the Cy Young Award in 2017 or 2018, yeah, like wherever 10, it was. It was 10 award that year. It was insane. <laughs> and he's underperformed since. Yeah. So I don't know what the real Aaron Nola is. And I'm not saying I do it. I'm just saying it's a thought because he's the one guy that would have value. I'm not, you said it. Zach Wheeler would definitely have value, but he's got a high contract. So I'm not sure teams are going to love that. And he's our ace. So I'm really not trying to sell our ace. Okay. I'm not trading Bryce. Outside of that, what do you have? I'm not trading Bryce or JT. I'm not giving up on Alec Boehm yet. Even though his defense is tragic. Dropping pot flies, dude. But, George, do you see the sad reality? They have nothing else to give. You're Nada. Nada. They have nothing. No, you're right. And no like, one I'll, wants Odubel. Oh. No one wants McCutcheon. No. no one wants Gene. No one wants Reese. Not a lot of people want Didi. No one wants Andrew Knapp. No one wants Nick Maton. No one wants anyone out of your bullpen. I promise you that. No one wants Vince Velasquez. No one wants Chase Anderson. No one wants Matt Moore, Spencer Howard. You have Zach nothing. Eflin? What about Eflin? Yeah, I, maybe he's got good stock. Maybe. Yeah. But, like, yeah, no, I agree with you. I think Nola – and I would love to see some trades for Nola. Like, I would love to see what the offers would what be. What the market is. Yeah, I yeah, agree because, I'm again, I'm not underselling for Nola just to get some prospects back or whatever. But it be but interesting yeah. to see what the market is. Yeah, definitely interesting. And who knows with Dombrowski? I mean, he he's, he wants to win. You know he does want to win. Like, I don't think – Yes, but you have to be realistic. I want to win. Do you want to win, George? I want to win really bad. Yeah, yeah. But does this team have the makeup to win right now? Fuck no. Does this team have the? Does this team with a few little tweaks to it we to this no, roster? No. It's, we need a whole haul. We can't. There's no little tweaks that are gonna. You need it. an entire new bullpen. Yep. You need two or three new starters. Yep. And you got to see what happens with the with, with the lineup after this year. So yeah, I'm and. A few little tweaks and turns aren't gonna aren't gonna make this team a contender. So I know Dombrowski wants to win. Dombrowski wants to win, and I want to win. Twenty twenty one ain't it for the Philadelphia Phillies. And hey, maybe they go on a run. If they go on a run and make the playoffs, trust me. Even though I don't truly believe that they can contend, I'll still be all in come playoff time. And that, no, that is not me being a front runner because no. I was so down no. on them. Blah blah. No. No, they suck right now. If they make it, I'll talk myself into it, even though it won't happen. Easy. I will buy back in so fast. <laughs> I I love watching them win, but no, this I I still I don't have confidence in this team unless we actually start winning games and catching up this division because this is it's embarrassing. We're an embarrassing team. That's yeah. just, that's it. It's a mediocre. It's hard to watch now. You don't even want to watch. You just do, you don't even want to watch. And it, it it has come adding. There's no worse time for it, dude. After it, it's this stall period of the summer where, yeah, there's still NH, the Stanley Cup just started last night. The NBA, the conference uh, finals are still going on in the West and the East for the NBA. But for Philadelphia, this is it. Training camp doesn't open up for a month. No flyers. Sixers just got bounced and underperformed. So the most exciting thing right now is what we're about to get into. And it's Sixers uh, off season. Dame and it's time. Dame time. So George, <laughs> this is this is going to be a a running thing. You know, it's going to be a running thing in Philadelphia for weeks and on weeks on weeks. And we're not going to be any different here, no. Because I think change is necessary. But I haven't gotten to speak to you really about it. And I know we're going to share the same, you know, the same pain and you know, kind of sadness when it comes to two five. Because yeah. we were all on board. Me, you, Gint, Scotty, Brock, we all kind of share the same ideology of Ben and the same hope for Ben and, you know, what we think he can be. But the cold, hard fact is he's not right now, dude. The cold, hard fact is that 
something up here it isn't working when it's st- when he steps into the bright lights and he and he's afraid of the moment at the moment and he's afraid to fail and he's afraid to score. Danny Green has been saying it, which is pretty eye opening to me. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the uh, cold hard fact, George, is the whole idea of the Sixers team was that you had two superstars. Yeah. The fact is, you have a superstar and Ben Simmons. Yep. You have a and superstar I, who deserves more. And you have a superstar who is going to be 27 years old, who continues to battle major injuries throughout the course of his career. So, and he's seven foot two. God knows what he weighs. So, he's his prime is right now, and he's not going to have eight more years left on that prime. Nope. Let me get your thoughts on just the collapse at the end of the series and what you think needs to happen this offseason. Something's got to change. And I know everyone wants to trade Ben Simmons right now, and I completely understand that. Um, like, we we died on that hill. We supported him, like, forever. We always clapped back at people. But – the matter, like matter of fact, is he just he isn't he wasn't good enough, and he was a big part of that loss in the series. Now, if Embiid had another superstar to pair with him, like Dame, oh, like this this team is just so much different. So, I'm not trading Ben Simmons for nothing at his lowest point this off season. That's not going to happen. If you're not getting Dame out of it or a superstar, or some guy at it, like something that you can pair with him be that he deserves you're gonna let him play in the regular season you're gonna up his trade value because that's what he does he's a regular season player you know he's gonna perform his defense is gonna be outstanding you up his trade value maybe you look at the deadline but man something's gotta happen doc's gotta figure out how to adjust mid game you gotta get somebody in here that compliments and be in a way that ben simmons just can't and someone that can score the way ben simmons just can't which sucks because Dude, Ben Simmons can get to the rack, and we know. We saw him. We've seen him get to the rack. We've seen him do it. But mentally, it's, it's like the yips. Like, he just that, – that series was so sad to watch. When he didn't go for that dunk, that that is when it was over. When he didn't go for that dunk, yeah. right? That was when everyone – You know was, why we died on that hill, George, that you just brought up? Because he has it, a talent, man. It's, it's not just yeah. that, but it's because we believe he would fix the, – the, the issues that people were complaining about in the regular season – we thought wouldn't occur in the postseason. The six points, the four points, the lack of aggressiveness, the stalling the offense, we thought that wouldn't happen, and it did. And I reached my breaking point, and I can't excuse it anymore. That does not mean I am shipping Ben Simmons out automatically. That does not mean I don't want Ben Simmons on no matter what this next season. That doesn't mean I, I want Ben Simmons to prove me and everyone else wrong. Yeah. I can't defend four shots and five points in a game seven when you're the point guard. I can't no, no, defend no, no, no. single digits <laughs> points for the last I don't know how many games of this of a of a playoff series. I can't defend zero shot attempts in four straight fourth quarters of a playoff series. I can't defend it any more. I won't. I refuse to do it. I hope he locks himself in the gym. He's not. Com- he's not competing in the Olympics. I hope he figures it out. I. You know, this is a great comment right here. Leopards generally don't change their spots unless something traumatic happens. The Atlanta meltdown from Ben is that moment. He either swims or sinks next season, and it's. Com- you're completely right. I would love nothing more for him to come out next season and shoot the damn ball to shoot with the appropriate hand. Yeah. Okay. I just can't. My issue right now is I won't let myself, I won't let my heart fall for it again for the open gym video workouts for the pulling up from 35 and knocking it down after hitting someone with a crossover and then it not happening again. This is going to be year five. I just mentioned Embiid. You cannot continue to waste Joel Embiid's prime because he is the best chance. He is the best chance this team has at a championship since I don't know how long. Since 2001. 
Like, legitimately. But better then, dude, because they had Iverson and a bunch of role players in 2001. Yeah, and going is, against going against Kobe guy. and Shaq and the Lakers, like I was, you know, I don't remember that series. I was freaking two, three years old. Okay, but I don't know how a lot of people in Philadelphia really had faith they were going to beat. Maybe they did, maybe they did, but I don't know if a lot of people really had faith they were going to beat Kobe and Shaq Lakers yeah. with just AI. Yeah. But this, he's your best chance. And it's getting wasted for a 24-year-old that just won't shoot. And I can't, you know what, dude? I can't argue the fact that they play four on five. I'm not saying it's completely four on five basketball in the half court. It's not. No, it's not. But do you know how much you know how much easier life would be for Joel Embiid if he had a guard that could that was a threat? Not even just a threat, but like put aside like Damian Lillard or Bradley Bill, just a threat. You can't. You can't have your big man being the number one offensive guy in crunch time in a playoff game. Like he, like it was all on Embiid's shoulders. That's not what's supposed to happen. That's that you can't let that happen. And I, I think Embiid's sick of it too. I mean, you saw you saw his reaction when Simmons passed up the dunk opportunity. He would, yeah. yeah. Good comment though. No, and this is a great comment. Yeah, I don't he, give a shit about the three he, either. He shit, if he never shoots a three again, I don't care if he, he shoots a twenty footer. If he fifty footer. If he knocked down his free throws and he had a consistent little jump hook, or if Ben Simmons had a floater, game over, bro. Just something to his offensive arsenal. He has nothing. He lacks touch around the rim. He has no offensive arsenal, and he shot 30% from the free throw line and then won't shoot from the field. I can't defend that anymore. And the only thing with this is, yeah, you're right. I'm not trading Ben just to trade him. There's... Probably three guys. I'm sure if another guy came out, but there's three guys that I can think of that I would do it for. Damian Lillard, a guy that I said no about before, but I would do it now, Bradley Beal, and a guy I said no about before, but I would do it now, Zach Levine. All right, yeah, I was going to say. Those are the three names that are like out there that they could be moved that I would move Ben Simmons for that I wouldn't have done before, but I will now because I just think change is necessary, and if those guys are available, you do it. The issue, and we, I had a comment yesterday, and I don't know if Ryan means the same thing about bringing in a guard and keeping Ben. The issue with that is if Ben doesn't improve his offensive game, if you're just bringing in another guard to space the floor, positions don't really matter. So I had a commenter yesterday say, move Ben to the four. That's basically what he was, George. It doesn't matter. He was that a point forward. Like, he brought yeah. the ball up, but he played in the dunker spot off on the half court. Yep. It doesn't it's basically positionless basketball anymore. So that solves nothing. You have two options. You move him or he gets his head out of his ass offensively. That's it. Without one of those two things happening, the Sixers aren't winning a championship. He either figures it out and he becomes that 20 he becomes a 25-year-old phenom like we all thought he could be and all hoped he will be. Or you move them for a splash like Dame or Bradley Beal or Zach Levine to pair with Joel Embiid and Seth Curry and Tobias has George, think about that offense. Wow, dude, Embiid deserves that. He deserves it after all this. Like, if you paired him with one of those guys, oh my God, this offense would just looks so much smoother. Because was- you know what, you know where I'm at, George? We love the defense here in Philadelphia. We love the hustle, the grit, love the it. intensity. Yeah, we love it, George. Can I tell you a sad truth? We overvalue the hell out of it. Doesn't win a ring. We overvalue the living hell out of it. The Atlanta Hawks are not a good defensive team. We <laughs> said before this year that they couldn't play a lick of defense. They held the Sixers to under 100 points three times that I can remember in the second round. George, Atlanta good Hawks. offense will always beat great defense. The whistles don't favor the defender. They favor the offensive player. And it's just the set. What do you always hear? When it, when a guy makes a crazy shot over great defense. Great defense, better offense. And that's the reality of it. I'm not saying you can't play a lick of defense because you're not winning a championship that way either. Okay? But this, the cold hard truth is the Sixers had a defensive player of the year candidate. First team all NBA. They had two second team all NBA defenders. And you know what it got them? A second round exit because they couldn't score to an inferior opponent which is exactly so think about an offense of damian lillard seth curry 
Tobias Harris, Joel Embiid. You still have Shake Milton and George Hill coming off the bench. You have to figure it out with the three. Maybe you bring back Danny Green on a cheap deal. I don't know what you do with the three. Not my decision to make. But think about that. Think about Bradley Beal. Think about Zach Levine. Any of them. Obviously, Dame's the target we all want, but there's other guys out there. It's like, going to be very interesting because I don't watch, think Daryl Morey brings them back, dude. I don't think so either. But watch, like, just watching Dame absolutely torch the Nuggets that one game, take them to overtime, make over 10 threes. Dude, imagine Dame and Philly with Embiid. Pair imagine that. a Dame and Embiid pick and roll. Imagine a Bradley oh, Beal or Zach Levine. That's the thing. Dame is the number one, obviously. He's my pipe dream. I'll take those two. I but those, two. either one of those. And the, here's where I'll wrap up today's show. I know I keep sitting here saying, you don't just move Ben Simmons to move him. You don't move him for a bag of chips. The end goal of a Ben Simmons trade would be to push the Sixers closer to a championship than they already are. Where are they right now, George? They were a number one seed who can't get past the second round. So you have to do something to excel that, to push them from that, right? That roadblock. Trading Ben Simmons for Andrew Wiggins. Trading Ben Simmons for D'Angelo Russell. Trading Ben Simmons for Buddy Heald and Marvin Bagley does not push the Sixers to a championship. It makes them worse. You do not, not do close. those deals. Not even close. Now listen, I'm not saying that Ben Simmons holds the stock to bring in a Bradley Beal, a Zach Levine, or Damian Lillard after the playoff performance he just had. He doesn't anymore, okay? But he is a 24-year-old kid who is the Defensive Player of the Year candidate who is a two-time All-Star, has all these accolades, triple-doubles, everything, who if you pair him with a Tyrese Maxey or Matisse Thybul with other with first-round draft picks and pick swaps, maybe a third team gets involved, a la Minnesota, who, who wants them pretty bad, reportedly. Yep. Yep. There's ways to get it done. Ben Simmons doesn't hold the, the stock we thought he would have had a couple months ago when the James Harden trade was floating around and he would be the centerpiece. He's not that big of a centerpiece anymore. Currently, because like you said, George, his stock is at an all-time low right now. Something can still get done because a Portland, a Washington, a Chicago, a Minnesota, if they get involved, however, in a, as a three, as a third team, they will look at that 24-year-old and they'll think, I can fix him. I can unlock. I can unlock the potential. Exactly. And, you know, so many teams are going to be thinking that, and that's the thing. His stock might be at an all-time low, but they all know. They all know. Yeah. Um. So yeah. he says, "What's before we wrap up? What's Plan B if we can't get Beal, Dame, or Levine? Plan B uh, is you probably you, have Simmons you, on your roster for half yeah. the year. You see, if, how I, if I'm Daryl Morey, yeah. Ben Simmons still on the roster. And see how high he can go. That's, um, there's other things yeah. you can do, man. Like, um, there's other ways you could finagle uh, a Kyle Lowry to Philly because you're not trading yeah. Ben Simmons for Kyle Lowry." Yeah. No. I had a couple of people saying that yesterday. You do oh not my do God. that. God, what? No. That does not make you better. And he's what? Uh, 10 years older than 35? 35 years old. Kyle I mean, Lowry here. There, there, there's there's other options. Daryl Moore could figure other stuff out where, but the bottom line is if it's not for one of those three, Ben Simmons, or like I said, a guy that's not being shopped at the moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There there could be names that come out in a month or two weeks that yeah. I would be like, yeah, I would trade Ben for. But th- these are the three names that I think are realistically available. Um, and if if it's none of those and no one else becomes available, Ben Simmons is a 76er, but he has to figure it out. And that's the bottom line. Yep. No more having his, his half-brother and his dad as a shooting coach. No, no more, more yes having... Men. No more yes-men. Like yep. No, no more, more being men. coddled by, by your family and friends, Ben. We Guess what? Coddle Ben Simmons too, and we yeah, like, and I won't do it it's anymore. Over. It's over now, Ben. Like it's time to it's time to figure it out. Listen, it's and over. that and that is that is that is another thing that that this comment brought up earlier. You know, two how, three years ago, we watched Joel Embiid cry down the tunnel, yeah. and it changed him. It yeah. changed. It unlocked a different Joel Embiid. Yeah. Is Ben Simmons that same dog? Not even close. It could. Let's see. This would have to be a a mentally changing moment, a career defining moment for Ben Simmons, and we'll see what happens in the offseason. He either puts in the work, or Daryl Morey puts in the work on the phones. For myself, for George, everybody, have a nice night and go Sixers.